Part of the comic. That was a lot of fun to write. That was the mid eighties. Yeah, yeah. Actually, my, I had just finished my doctoral dissertation, got my PhD at UCSD on the subject of Halley's Comet, predicting it and other comets, how they, how the nucleus of uh, uh, the dynamics of how the water vapor would sublimate from the icy layers as, as the comet came close to the sun, the heat waves coming in through the dust, the, the, the uh, water vapor and training and carrying off the dust. Yeah. And uh, it seemed a great topic because Halley's Comet was coming and the Europeans were, had sent a space probe that was on its way and that would pass by Halley's Comet and take pictures. So it seemed a great, co uh, great topic, and we dived right in. Uh, we mapped out a general story arc. Yeah. It was an interesting forced march, because uh, I had the idea for the book years and years before, but had delayed it with other books, other projects. And when it suddenly occurred to me that the Hawley's Comet, you know, actually, I asked people in Cambridge, and they said, almost certainly Hawley pronounced his name that way, because Hall is Hall in English. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, was not going to delay just because our book wasn't finished, and that, that's the way you go. Well, so uh, so we, I remember we we did a very extensive outline. It's like twenty pages long. We spent a month working on the outline, but that allowed us to take the three point of view characters. You took one, Saul. I took the other. What was his name? Carl. Carl. And and, and we, we took turns with Virginia. <laughs> yes. Uh, so we had these three major characters, and it was a Saul, Carl, Virginia scene, Saul, Carl, Virginia scene, most of yeah. the way through. I think I took one Carl scene, and you took one Saul scene, just for, yes. to liven things up. Right. And then we alternated with Virginia, and it was a remarkable method for ensuring that the uh, characters had distinctly mm -hmm. different voices. Right. And in addition to that, when there were uh, occasional misunderstandings when you didn't really read the couple of <laughs> chapters before you were supposed to write your Carl scene, uh, really read them that closely, it was easy to correct the important uh, mistakes, but sometimes we just looked at them and said, leave that alone, because maybe Carl didn't understand. Yes. I mean, it makes the character more rounded. And, and I love how, because said you did your thesis on Hawley's comment, and... and uh, and, and you had all that, you could, you could do the, uh, what they crudely call info dumps, but I think they were leavened in with a lot <laughs> of good stuff. So, so we just concentrated on what we really had technical expertise in. You did the commentary stuff, and I wrote the sex scenes. <laughs> <laughs> we all did what we're expert in. There was a lot of biology in there, and it wasn't all sex. But there was an awful lot of biological speculation there. We, we speculated, for example, you know that, how, uh, that Heart of the Comet is cited in biological literature um, for being one of the early works to discuss um, in immunological challenge right. as a therapy. Yes. Challenging the immune system so that um, mm -hmm. the, the immune system is better able to fight off disease. Right. The notions of symbiosis, for instance, um, yeah. And, and also the notion that is starting to perk again, that comets throughout the universe may be the places where pre-organic chemistry yeah. actually created life. Yeah, and it could be. Uh, we need to do more cometary research. Uh, alas, we don't seem to be headed that way. But, but the, the, well, we just had the, yeah. um, the what was it, uh, the Stardust, no, that, the other yeah. mission that went past Temple, uh, Temple One, Comet Temple One, and, yeah. and verified my doctoral dissertation, but that was very nice of them. But the interesting thing is that though my doctoral dissertation was proved by the Giotto mission, and, and that was very nice, thank you Europeans, the one document that was published before how that Giotto mission passed by Halley's Comet, photographed it, the one document on Earth that correctly predicted the size, <laughs> shape, and composition of Halley's Comet was our novel, Part of the Comet. Right. It got the, <laughs> the size right. In my doctoral dissertation, I considered the likelihood that the size would be smaller. Because I didn't quite grok in my mind that the dust would be really, really black. 
But of course it would be. It's carbonaceous chondrite material. Yeah. <laughs> but in the novel, we expanded the size of the yeah. of nucleus of Halley's comet. Why? As I recall, it was because we were trying to explain why it was such a rich tail. No, it was it was in order for it to have enough gravity. For oh. Well, that's true too. For characters <laughs> to run across the surface shooting each other. Yes. It was it was completely yes. plot driven science. <laughs> yes. Yes. No, you're right about that. <laughs> Never mind about the quantitative stuff. Yes, sure. We needed gunfights at the OK Corral. We needed <laughs> gunfights on the surface of the Halley's Comet. Yeah. And so, being anal compulsive uh, physicists, we had to have it the right size right. so that there'd be enough gravity. And that's true. We could have given a, a, a a heavier core, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, it was fun to write. And fun to read. A real, real fun book. I think so, although I've never read it. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, when you've been through a book, I mean, I, I, George Martin said, I'm sure that you do what I do. Whenever a book of mine comes out, I sit down and spend two days just reading it in hardcover form. And I was astonished. It never even occurred to me to re read a novel I'd written. It's like calling up friends from your old high school class or something. Uh, and, and, and being where, engrossed by their life stories. Yes, right. Oh, yes. Well, and well, their pets. It, it reminds me of the end of Pee Wee Herman's uh, Pee, uh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure, where he's watching the movie that was made of his great quest for his bike. And uh, he says, come on, Dolly, let's go. And she says, well, don't you want to watch the movie? Watch it. I lived it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so enough uh, about Heart of the Comet. Mm -hmm. And we'll um, see about maybe, maybe making a sequel someday. A sequel and get it reissued. Yeah, a sequel might be fun. Um, further Adventures of Holly's Gang. There you go. <laughs> <laughs>